I do think there's a real big crisis in the church. It, it, it actually feels a bit like 1989 when you turned on the news and there was another government had fallen. It's been a bit like that. And it, it does seem to me that we are looking at one of those events in, in which the direction of the church, the Roman church, changes. It seems to me that there's nowhere to hide now. We've had two popes in succession who really denied that the church needed to change at all. They reluctantly accepted changes within the church, uh, uh, changes in the liturgy, for instance. Uh, and worship means clearly a huge amount to Benedict, uh, and he's pushed it backwards. He's even changed the translation of liturgy and worship in, in English. Uh, and you can go on denying that change is happening for so long. You can keep your head inside a paper bag for so long, but in the end you have to take the paper bag off uh, and that's what's happening to the hierarchy of the Roman Church now. They're having to face realities which they've steadily avoided facing with, um, for the last 30 years. Let's think of item one on the agenda, and that's changing the celibacy rule. The Western Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is the only church in Christendom that has imposed universal celibacy on its clergy. No other church has. Now that's very significant. And it, it has just about worked for 400, 500 years, only just. And it's produced some really unpleasant side effects. It's produced clergy who have far too high an opinion of themselves because they're different from the rest of humanity. It's produced a certain amount of clergy who've abused their position and abused their power in relation to vulnerable people like children. All those are realities, and those realities have been exposed in the last 20 years. The great new fact worldwide, and, and not just in northern Christianity or northern religion, the place of women, utterly changed in the last really 100 years, no more than that, and it's an extremely rapid change. And it seems to me that a lot of angry conservative religion is precisely about the changing position of women. It's male anger, male fear. We see it in, in, the, in the Church of Rome because it's an intensely male-dominated institution. Even nuns now are seen, are seen to be the enemy by Rome. Quite extraordinary that the, the, the faithful nuns of the United States are being treated as rebels by the Vatican. Women are a problem for traditional religion, and yet I suspect they will also be the salvation of traditional religion. There's always a danger if a liberal comes in as Pope. Uh, that man will be swept away in a revolution. We've seen it with Kerensky back in the Russian Revolution. We've seen Gorbachev uh, see that position. But that's perhaps something which some might say was the Holy Spirit's work. If the church has to break up, well, it has to break up. Uh, and it may be that uh, that's the only way in which you can reformulate, restructure Western Christianity, which you have to remember, uh, it consists of Protestantism as well as the Church of Rome. These are all fragments of the Western Church. And it may be that you need to realign, reconstruct the Church of Rome before you can do much in reconstructing the rest of Western Christianity and the rest of Christianity thereafter. The centralization of the church has been one of its most disastrous features since the French Revolution. I think you have to see where this comes from. Up until 1789 and the French Revolution, the church had a, a very dispersed sort of leadership. The Pope was really just an Italian prince with a, a great set of ideological centralizing baggage around him, but there were other sources of authority within the church. There were kings, Catholic monarchs, there were prince archbishops within the Holy Roman Empire, there were cathedral chapters. All these had their own privileges, their traditions, their rights, and the French Revolution swept them all away, leaving in the end only one monarch in the church, the restored papacy of 1815, when Napoleon had been defeated. The Pope came back, and virtually none of the monarchs. And the First World War did for the Catholic monarchs, which survived with the Slight exception of the King of Belgium, but let's put that on one side. Otherwise, you just don't have any authority within the church which is not that of the Bishop of Rome. And that was fatal, because as we've seen with the pontificate of Benedict, it cannot be done. It can't be done by a, an ailing, frail, sick old man, but it can't be done by a healthy uh, man in prime of life either. 
And uh, that is the problem for the church. It's really got to restore its former traditional patterns of decentralization. It is a myth that the Church of Rome is run from the Vatican. It's a very recent modern phenomenon.